same way. Right? When you do it, you'll find you instinctively push really hard to start with, and as you're getting lighter, and I'll speed this up just to hurry up here, you've got to have the control over the pencil, even at the lightest part. Well, so, Warrawa, we're... Caters for years 7 to 10, so that's the middle years of schooling. That's been a decision of our board that we would focus on those. Those are the most challenging years for a lot of our kids. It's uh, an area that we've put a lot of emphasis on to build up their ability, their confidence, their, their knowledge of what's expected in a secondary school setting so that they can then go on to complete the senior years uh, if that's what they want to do. But our program is also designed around the ability for all of the girls to work towards uh, certificates so that they've got portable skills that they can take back to their communities. So they might have a certificate too in hospitality or a certificate too in um, horticulture, you know, things that might be useful in their communities. Warrawa officially opened in 1983. It was started by my late sister Hillis Morris, who had the vision of having a school that catered for the specific needs of Aboriginal children. That was based on her own experiences, and she felt that it needed to be a holistic approach to education, and that um, it needed to be a boarding school. The program needed to also have a cultural component and um, very much a health and well-being component. So that's basically what we have at Warrawa today. Our curriculum is based on the Victorian Essential Learning Standards. So um, apart from having you know numeracy and literacy and health and science, it's all delivered from an Aboriginal perspective. We have a very strong visual arts program and we're about to uh, extend that to the creative art encompassing the performing arts. Our visual arts program has uh, been very well established for a number of years. We've had a number of exhibitions here at the college and elsewhere in Melbourne. And I think the most recent thing that's been pretty exciting is the application of their artwork onto fabric and then creating fabrics and designing fashions around that. We had a, our own Style and Up Fashion Parade recently and uh, actually entered some of our garments in the Deadly Stressed competition and uh, we took out a prize for that. Uh, we've got a very strong uh, partnership with the Malthouse Theatre and also the Willen Indigenous Centre for the Arts at the Victorian College for the Arts. Our programs here are very much um, around the, the child, the student, so there's a lot of support and we um, understand the difficulties of transitioning into a school from home, from a community, um, as much as we understand the difficulties of transitioning from a school back into home or a community because it's two totally different lifestyles. Just clear both ways, we can just keep on going. Which way? Right, you're indicating right. Straight up. Straighten up. We drive on the left of Australia, okay? Yes. <laughs> We truly value our partnership with our communities and we put a lot of effort into building and maintaining those partnerships. We also have a school community forum every year and we invite the families down and we talk about what the communities want, what the families want for their daughters. And then we adjust our program so that we are addressing the aspirations of the communities for their daughters. Our boarding facilities, we had a, an upgrade quite recently. All of our staff in that area are quite well qualified and have a greater understanding of some of the issues that some students present with. 
And you know, here at Warrawa we celebrate achievements, whether they're big or small, because we understand how difficult it is for the girls to be away from home, but they also know that you know, their families want that for them and that when they're here they, they need to work hard and then so when at the end of the year it's big celebration time. <laughs> Uncle Doug made a profound statement. He said, it's time for our children to learn about their ancestors and about the law, to know who they are so that they can walk with pride and be part of Australia today, not just in the past. The sentiment was still there and it has great meaning, I think, saying that we can be proud of our heritage and our ancestors who we honour, but also looking forward to be able to walk in both worlds.